Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number four. The root meaning is many or multiply. The word four in Hebrew is arba. This is used as a cardinal number for counting one, two, three, four. Genesis 2.10 And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Genesis 15.13 And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Arba is also the name of a character who appears in Joshua 15.13 And unto Caleb the son of Yephunah he gave a part among the children of Judah according to the commandment of Yahweh to Joshua even the city of Arba the father of Anak which city is Hebron So we read about a city called Kiryat Arba and it's talking about this person Who was this person? Numbers 13.33 And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So Arba is the father of Anak, and we see the sons of Anak are giants. So we come to the conclusion that Arba was also a giant. Behind the idea of Arba, is the root word reva, which has everything to do with being four. Uh, we see it used as four square, Exodus 27, 1. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square. In other words, what we would just call square, King James calls it four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. In Ezekiel 45, 2, of this there shall be for the sanctuary 500 in length with 500 in breadth, square round about, and 50 cubits round about for the suburbs thereof, talking about the millennial temple. The idea of the ordinal number of the fourth, first, second, third, fourth thing also is this root reva. Exodus 34, 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will be, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Rivi'i, you can see, is a related root, and it is the uh, also the ordinal number, the fourth. Genesis 1.19, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Numbers 15.4, then shall he that offereth his offering unto Yahweh bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hin of oil. So it's what we would call a quarter, just like our coin, a quarter is one-fourth of a dollar. Behind all these meanings, this root, reva, reva, means to lie down with all the limbs extended. In other words, if a person was lying flat out in four directions, their arms and their legs. And this goes, it's related to the idea of sexual intercourse that, as we see, we're going to see, the idea of four comes from multiplying to make a multitude. Leviticus 19:19 19, 19. Ye shall keep my statutes thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee so the idea is the cattle are multiplying uh, interestingly in Psalm 139:3 in English we don't get the implications of this but it is there thou compassed my path and my lying down 
and art acquainted with all my ways. Apparent root is a two-letter phoneme which expresses an idea by itself, but it may not be a word by itself. However, in this case, we're going to see that this parent root, Reshbet, appears by itself quite a bit. Rav, or sometimes it's pronounced Rov, means much, great, or many. We're going to see a lot of examples. Genesis 6.5 And Yahweh said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This was the reason that he's going to bring the flood. Genesis 7.11 In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the foundations of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. In another example, Genesis 13.6 And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. Genesis 21.34 And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Genesis 25.23 And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. It's a little bit different meaning, but the idea is that he is more, he is older, he's more in years. Genesis 45:28. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. We don't uh, take this concept of enough. Enough means we're finished, it's sufficient. Uh, here it just means it's, it's many. It's the whole information to Israel is is a lot for him. And so he says, that's a lot of information. I believe that Joseph is alive. I'm going to Egypt. In a phrase that you're probably familiar with, Exodus 12:38, And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. The phrase in Hebrew for mixed multitude is Erev Rav. That Rav is the multitude, the many part of the phrase. Deuteronomy 9.14 Let me alone that I might destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. Yahweh talking to Moses. Again, as we saw with the number three, that there's a measure of greatness among, um, between different people and we show a level of leadership as it appears in Second Kings 25.10 and all the army of the Chaldees that were the captain, that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. So this is used also as a measure of greatness, of importance among the people. He is the captain. Daniel 1.3 And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. He's the master. And this is where we get our modern word rabbi. It appears in, in Greek uh, in the New Testament. Matthew 23.7 and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. In fact, it should be pronounced Ravi, even in Greek, but also in Hebrew. And it literally means, my great one. Verse 23, 8. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Messiah, and all ye are brethren. John 138 Then Yeshua turned, and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? But that E ending, as we say in English, I, Rabbi, Ravi, that ending means it's a personal possession, my. And in its Aramaic form, Rabboni, we see in Mark 10:51, it is translated, 
And Yeshua answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Rabboni is written in the Greek, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And again, when Mary actually sees Yeshua at the tomb, in John 20:16, Yeshua saith unto her, Mary, she turned and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, but literally, my Master. Another root which comes from this two-letter root, Resh Bet, Rava, means to become great, numerous, or increase. Genesis 1, 22, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. A very important commandment, Pru Uruvu, Be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 3, 16, and the, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy con conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Again the idea of multiplying or increasing in Genesis 7:17, 7, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bear up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. In Psalm 51, 4, a little uh, different interpretation. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. In other words, increase the washings, inc multiply the washings until I am completely washed clean and cleanse me from my sin. Another word from this root is rivava, and rivava connotes the biggest number that you can imagine. Sometimes it's translated as 10,000, sometimes it's translated as a million. The Greek idea behind Rivava is myriads, which is a word that we use in English to mean multiple, multiple, multiple. Genesis 2460, And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. There is a word for thousand, which comes from the letter Aleph, uh, the idea is that as we're counting, we begin at a thousand, we begin counting again. So, Elef, Elefim means thousands, but then we have thousands of millions. The millions is multiplied over and over till we can't imagine Rivavot. Deuteronomy 32, 30. How shall one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and Yahweh had shut them up? So here it's translated as 10,000. The idea is just a, it's a multiple number, maybe bigger than we can imagine. Another interesting word which comes from this root is arbe with an aleph. And it's translated variously as locusts and grasshoppers. And you can imagine that when these bugs swarm, there's a multiple number beyond which we can understand. Psalm 7846. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locust. Judges 6, five, For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. What is the importance of four to the believer? We are to magnify and multiply Yahweh's name, his qualities in the earth. In Hebrew, when we talk about a name, which is the word Shem in Hebrew, it has much more meaning than just the title for that person, or even for God. But it involves all the qualities, all the characters, all the essence of who that person is and who our God is. So these are the things that we are called to bring forth, to proclaim, to multiply in the earth. Psalm 34, 3. O magnify Yahweh with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 69, 30. 
I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. In Luke 1.46, Mary gave her prayer, and she said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. In Acts 10.46, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God by speaking out the name, the qualities, the perfection of who Yahweh is on the earth. This fulfills the commandment. Another way that we are to magnify and multiply Yahweh's name in the earth is to multiply believers. In order that Yahweh will be magnified, there are more and more and more and more people calling forth, proclaiming his greatness in the earth. Matthew twenty-eight fourteen, And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. We see that there are many, many, many saints in Jude one fourteen, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So this is the idea, the word is myriad there, in the Greek, of thousands of thousands, a multiple number. As we live our lives, we speak forth the praises of Yahweh, we tell of his great wonderful things, this magnifies his name in the earth, it magnifies his characteristics. As we meet other people and we are able to bring to them the good news of who Yahweh is, and they in turn will believe the numbers of people magnify Yahweh's name in the earth. I'm sure as you think about these things there are other ideas will come to you as related to the concept of four, of many, of multiplying. In the meantime, to Simita Inayim al Hashamayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.